G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, playing in the color green as the Holy Roman Empire. It's Cowp. What? <laughs> Why do we have a barracks? I, I guess he's anticipating the response or the, uh, what, what his enemy is going to be doing. And speaking of his enemy, over on the north side of the map, playing in the color pink as the Mongols. It's give you anxiety. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dry Arabia. We're here witnessing two players grinding it out on the ranked ladder, trying their best to slowly make their way past, well, they're all Conqueror 3, I can assure you that much. But trying to get into that top 20. That's, that's, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Did you guys hear that voice line? <laughs> He's role playing as a car. I've just woken up at seven o'clock in the morning and this guy's role playing as a car. Mate, it's too early to be a car. You're in 1400 after <laughs> AD right now. This is, this is not car time, my friend. <laughs> oh God. Oh Lord. We're barely a minute into this game and I'm already losing my nuggets. I apologize for friends and family. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about how we expect this game to go. Not too well for Corp, let's just say that much. Mongols love to go for early aggression and the HRE, the Holy Roman Empire, I, whenever I say HRE, I don't know why, but I see so many YouTube comments of people just saying HRE and then they emphasize the H. Mate, that's how I say H. If you've got a problem with how I say H, then uh, you look up, I, I, I don't know, then, then uh, I mean, fair enough. That, that's, uh, I'll, I'll leave that with you. That, that's, that's, that's for you to work out, all right? That's not for me to work out. That's how I pronounce it. Anyway, we've got a bit of an interesting opening coming out from GUA. GUA is not going to be the aggressor here. No, no. In fact, it's going to be quite the opposite. It's going to be Kalp who's going to be the aggressor. Now, before we get into this game, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to tell you that these two gentlemen probably are both streaming on Twitch right now. So maybe go check them out. Go give them a, a like, a follow. Actually, you can't give them a like on Twitch, but you can give them a follow. You can do that. You can go say good day. Corp or Kalp. Uh, he is a, a German streamer and give you anxiety. An English streamer. Well, English speaking streamer. We should say that much. But yeah, there seems to be a lot of German players in the Age of Empires 4 community. I don't know about you guys. If you're from Germany, put your hands up. You from Germany? Yo, what's up? Welcome, guys. Uh, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of Germans in the Age of Empires community. I think in, in just more broadly, like the RTS community, right? I don't know what it is with you guys. You guys just seem to enjoy the, the finer things in life. You know, maybe there's not that many good golfers in, from Germany, but there's a lot of good gamers from Germany. And speaking of gamers, watch out there, gamer. You're gonna, gonna lose a Spearman for free. Town center. Just chilling out. Now, one of the things to note is the Uvu cannot be moved, but the Town Center can. We could look to see him move the Town Center to cover the Uvu. Because he will lose the Uvu. And you don't want to lose the Uvu. I'm kind of surprised that he doesn't. I, I would hand in and then, like, move my TC. That oh, You know what? Like, moving your TC is so ballsy, though. I remember one game, someone tried to move their TC. And I think it was a Beastie. I remember watching Beastie. And I think they tried to move their Town Center. Beastie just got his scout and right click the town center and it just followed the town center around sieging it down and at no point was the town center ever able to get back down and it was just like it was the saddest thing but it was also hilarious well it looks like the uvu is going to be slightly protected here oh that that's an awkward that's an awkward moment right there insufficient wood not something that you want don't you love this music coming out at this point it's such nice music oh GUA playing with fire quite literally right here trying to keep this uvu alive i love that he's got the khan here he's gonna lose one of these units surely his, his micro is not this good so many spears coming out early i'm loving this from cap I've, I've been doing the same thing with uh with chinese probably probably not this uh not this patch but i reckon opening with spears is so it's so good right like it buys you so much time you can force the aggression the mongol player now he's on the toes if he makes a mistake he loses a villager he's down a vill he's repairing the entire time he's draining he's not gathering with this and behind it, you're just being chilling. Like, you, you sitting there with John Cena. You got your ice cream in your hand. You're having a great time. And speaking of great times, take a look at this. Corp aging up. Beautiful Arkham Chapel. Should be getting the edge of the town center, the gold, and the wood. He's having an absolute beauty of a time. And look at the micro coming out from GUA. I mean, I'm trying, trying to... Can we... Hey, can we get rid of this stone icon? I don't need to see this stone icon. I'm watching from Corp's perspective. Even if I was watching from GUA's perspective, it's just there. If I do this, does it stay there? It does stay there. It's like the sacred site icon. We need to get rid of that. I'm going to write a letter. Age up comes through though. And GUA manages to, to hold out for this long. Do we see an archery range come down? No, we don't because all, all of the... Uh... 
I, I, I swear I just saw food draining right there. Oh, he actually, he actually exchanged out Vils. Corp now aged up as well behind it. Look at that five minute age up from Corp. That is insanity. What a build order from Corp right there. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to go back and watch that one. Have a look at his villager allocation so you can get an idea. But that is crazy to think that he gets up at five minutes, 11 seconds with five spear opening. I think it was actually more than five spears. I reckon it could have been four. Uh, four. I reckon <laughs> more than five spears. I reckon it was four. <laughs> that's, that's some Drongo math for you right there. I love the GUA is just holding down so hard. Holding, holding the fort with a single Khan. A single Khan to rule them all. We'll check in now on the south side though. We've got an archery range coming down. Corp playing a, a really interesting Holy Roman Empire style. I don't think I've ever seen this kind of style before. I suspect he was expecting a an early aggression, an early aggressor, an early aggression coming out from GUA. But he never saw it. And interestingly, GUA goes for the deer stones instead of going for any kind of trade. This is this has been so annoying for, for GUA to deal with. Look at this, still more still spears here. Targeting this down. There's so much value coming out from this. And GUA just trying to fast castle. He's literally just trying to fast castle. He's trying to go through it. Like, you, you're so strong, GUA. Just, just keep, your, keep your head up, princess. That's a good song. You guys heard that song? That, that's, uh, what's his name? Anton Sebra, I think it was, uh, who wrote that song. That's a good song. Go check that one out. I'm not going to leave a link in the description. I'll let you search it. He's, uh, he's got a lot of good music if you're into the more emotional side of things. Uh, my, my wife is a big fan. She loves him. I think if he did a concert in Australia, she'd probably make me go see him. I wouldn't mind it though. I wouldn't complain. He's got some. He's got some good, good tunes. Good tunes. Anyway, we we continue moving forward because at the moment, Corp is walling the entire entirety of his map. He wants to keep himself nice and safe. The men at arms have joined the fray. He's found the next target. The next target. No, sorry, Bob. It's not going to be that Uvu. It's not going to be anything but that girl. That juicy, juicy girl. And the town center going to be firing down. Look at him trying to work through the hardened armor of the men at arms. It's a, it's, a, it's a slow battle. And GUA going to be... No, don't tell me. Don't tell me, GUA. Oh, okay. He should be fine. Nine on, on that one. Nine on that one. He should have enough to, to click up here. Oh, he does. Oh, he's going to be so happy. But I can't help but feel like GUA... Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of a time when I was a child. When I see GUA doing this. I, I feel like GUA is just like, must get... Castle! And, uh, like, the only thing he wants to do in this game is castle. And if he makes it to castle, he wins the game in his head. Meanwhile, like, Corp's actually playing the game and he's like, I'm burning down your Uru, I'm killing your villagers out here on the gold vein. GUA is literally doing the no unit challenge. We've seen him do it before. Well, to be honest, we saw him do the no wall challenge before. Uh, we're going to see him do the no unit challenge here today. How long can he go without making any units despite this sustained aggression? He's been being... He's, he's been attacked since the first minute of the game. I say first minute, technically like the second minute, right? Like about 60 seconds in, a little bit after that. The, the barracks got dropped, the spearman was trained. It had to walk over to the, this side of the map. But the Uvu is going to be going down. It was a long battle. And all GUA did was get... He just gathered up 700 stone. That's it. So he doesn't really gain anything from all of the resources. And finally, GUA is like, hmm, actually, maybe I should make units. I don't know. I, I was kind of thinking not. But I, I, I don't know, mate. It's a tough call. It's a tough call. You know, you're getting attacked. 15 enemy units in your base, killing your dudes. Do you make units? It's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's it's optional, right? It's optional. Because you can always go to the next game. And speaking of the next game, look at this. Corp back home. Just going absolutely ham with farms. I'm loving this stuff already from Corp. Beautiful stuff coming out from him. Very early farms. Now, one of the easiest sieves to transition of farms with is going to be the HRE. We've got very high value farms. The reason their farms are actually very good for anybody playing along at home, there's a couple of reasons. They've got a very good farm transition because their villagers carry a lot of wood. Uh, so it makes them very effective wood choppers. But in addition to that, once they do transition of farms, their farms are a lot better than most other sieves because they've got that extra 40% gather rate coming through from the Arkan Chapel. And on top of that, they've also got the extra carry capacity. And it's infinite. So like you imagine, right, like deer. If, if you put your Arkan Chapel on top of deer, that deer patch is running out in like three minutes tops, right? It'll, it'll be gone. But you put it on top of farms and they last forever. So this is a really good way to utilize the Arkham Chapel's bonus. And it's going to mean that he's got a very solid source of food for the remainder of the game. 
Horseman number one coming down across the map, though. Corp is completely, I say complete, completely walled in. There's not a single way into his base once this wall gets up. Completely walled in. He's done a really good job. And I think, is he looking for Castle Age now? He's got 900 gold in the bank. I feel like he's not only looking for Castle Age, he might be looking for, uh, looking for a gold ring or something like that. Because that is a lot of gold he is saving up. Archer's pushing back. GUA still not yet aged up. The dream. The dream of aging up. GUA going to be looking to fight out this man at arms with villagers. This is this is the sad life of a no unit enjoyer. The no unit. Oof. <laughs> uh, that, that was a headshot. I can confirm. I saw FPS Doug. He confirmed it was also a headshot. Nice little picket fence comes in. Palisade not going to be under any kind of threat. But this villager, not going to be too long for this world. You can see him trying his best to get it up. But unfortunately, he's suffering a little bit of dysfunction. A little bit of dysfunction of the hammer, it seems. Step it out. Going to get dropped down now for GUA. That is not the step it out. That is the step it out. A lot of vills up here as well. Ten vills. So where does GUA go from here? Number one, you want to go for relics. All right. You got you to look to try and secure them. So he's doing the right thing in that he's got units out. I wouldn't even be... T like, I, I would just be leaving this, right? Like, this is great. Just just leave it. That's fine. You don't need to get in here, right? You you don't want to get in there. It's ugly. You want to just be picking up relics. You want to be going into knights. You want to be picking up relics. You can't wall your... Uh, you can't wall the relics. But you can stick units on top of them. I mean, you could probably put an outpost on top. He's got, he's got a lot of resources in the bank as well. Is he going for a second TC? Is he just chopping a second TC at this point? Gee, wait, come on. You know better than that. Right on board now with the resources a minute. So you guys can get a bit of indication of where their economies are at. Step it out. Going to get interrupted. GUA. Oh, GUA. Having a tough time this game, isn't he? This is this is not the best. Not, not the best game for GUA. And now going to get cleaned up on this south side. He's got to run out of here. He's, he needs to keep these archers alive. It's a bit of a question mark as to why he even came in here. And at the same time, that villager was attempting to close the wall. Men at arms forces the step right out away. Could have an age up coming through soon for Corp. Where, where's his next food source? Because I feel like Corp is just not really taking much food. I say that. How many bills does he have on food? He's got 15 bills on food. Eh, it's not that many, is it? He's got 35 bills. I don't know where his villages are, though. 15, 11, 5. That's like... Where, there's like 6 missing, right? Or is it just the prelates? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You want relics? How about that? Is he going regnets? I think he's going to go regnets, right? Uh, he can definitely go regnets here. Uh, he, he does not need to go Burgrave at all. GUA might be in a bit of trouble. He, he, that, that single man at arms really cost him a lot. Because now GUA can't make... Like, his knights are delayed. You can see he's, he's got nothing, right? Like, because all of these villagers were going to be making... We're going to be gathering up gold. So that single man at arms has just delayed him so much. And regnets is going to be coming up. This is definitely the right choice here. All villagers to the Ragnets. You can see how urgently he wants to pick up these relics. Prelate going to get picked off here. You can see more units going to be rallying towards this position. Prelate's out on the map. A single horseman. You can see how urgently he's trying to get this up. Everyone to the landmark, please. He's got how many vills? He's got 35 villagers. Actually, how many vills does he have? 35. Yeah, he's got 35 villagers. 28 are on the landmark. That's 80% of his villagers are on this landmark. That's math for you. I'm, I'm no guy that's good at math, but I can tell you right now. That's that's a lot of villagers. Everyone to the landmark. One relic. Two relics. Three relics. He's looking to take the fourth relic as well. Doesn't actually rally. Is he just going across the map? This is so ballsy. So he's, he's just kind of triggered the enemy and he's just told him like, hey, I'm going to get your relic, don't mind me. I always make sure I shift click around it. Yeah, as you can see right now, like the Lancer is just like, hey, I know I know where your prelate's going. Like you'll just be lighting to the relic. It's, it's a really like common mistake that I see a lot of top players make. He's got to get this wall up. I don't think he's going to make it to the relic in time. It's a long walk away. But he will pick up this one. Four relics is very, very good. Good luck ever trying to beat a Holy Roman Empire player with four relics. That's that is that's a that's a lot of gold. That is a lot of gold. 
And indeed, the fourth relic does get picked up there. Where are these relics being held? Has he got outposts somewhere? Is he just chilling out with them? They're on the way back in. Slowly. All three. Now in the middle of the map. Archer's going to get cleaned up. The Lancer number's looking good for GUA. He's up to four Lancers. And all because of that man at arms, he slowed down. Imagine had those Lancers. If you have one Lancer on every single relic, you're in such a great position for GUA. Because you, you don't worry about the units. You just go after the, uh, you just go after the Prelate. And you're able to contest all of them. And look, he's, he's going again. He makes the same mistake. He says, hey, GUA, I'm going for a little bit of a run by. You interested? GUA says, nah, dude, I'm good. I'll take out your units. He's doing a decent job. Only a single or two spearmen here. He's trying to get the uh, trying to get the body block. Not going to happen. That's force him back towards the base. So very nice timing there from GUA with the lancers. He's got to be careful though. He's got to be careful. There's a lot of spearmen here. Yet to get their veterancy upgrade. We do see it coming through now. And GUA all of a sudden looking pretty ge pretty pretty decent, pretty decent coming out of the blocks now. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Get over there. Go on, go on, go on. Do it, do it, do it. Is he... I guess he's just going to play it... Uh, he's going to play it the right way. Because the correct way is to do this. The incorrect way is to come over here and, and do what Salami would do. It's, it's ballsy. But it, it very rarely works. Because the villagers are just going to run away. They're Mongol villagers. They got the wheelbarrow. They're extra quick. Siege Workshop coming down in the back. Corp not yet looking for an imp. And I think that's probably the right decision. You'd probably want to stay away from Imperial. At least until you know you're not going to die. Because you've you've already done so much damage, right? Like you've caused... You've delayed the Mongol. You put them behind for probably like three minutes in comparison to you. They are very far behind right now. Maybe not three minutes. Maybe like two minutes. So I think just staying alive here is really, really important. Veterancy for those spears have now come through. A lot of infantry beginning to push out. Siege Workshop down in the back, remember. So he could be looking for a Maganel or two. And these night numbers starting to look a little bit concerning. But keep in mind, there are plenty more archers coming down. And GUA not even moving into crossbows. Just sticking completely. Khan going to go down. Oh my lord, that Khan devoting himself right now to greater things. Like respawning at the town center. But GUA going to be going into veteran archers. Probably looking to pick up plus one, plus two shortly. Let's have a look and see. Blacksmith is here. Nothing really active at the moment. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. GUA, wake up, my friend. Look at these. Look at these archery rangers coming down. Triple archery rangers adding in. That's a lot of archers. So I wonder if he's going to be moving into a mix of crossbows as well. I really like adding in the crossbows as the Mongols. Crossbows are such a great unit for the Mongols. And not a lot of people appreciate them as, as their, like, their primary unit. The reason why they're so good for the Mongols is because they have the outposts to protect them with the sprinkled emplacements, and they also have the yam network, so they move faster. So they pretty much counter every single unit, except for like the Mangadel and the horsemen. But obviously, with the sprinkled emplacements and a few spears thrown in, they're fine. They're absolutely fine. Corp continuing to push up. Good little mass here of uh, infantry. A very happy camper at this point in time. It's very rare to see Holy Roman Empire make crossbows or make archers or make make anything from the archery range in fact big shots coming in GOA gonna be on the on the defensive once again sacred site number one taken bit of a counter attack coming in but remember these walls these walls are just so amazing this this is why you need to wall if you're not walling please start walling because right there you saw GUA went for a counter attack and he gets completely denied because there's a wall there and he's like oh you know what I can't I can't counter attack but he is gonna look to clean it up right now the numbers have been dwindled down enough. The, the men at arms are going to be taken out completely by the knights and the archer's going to be able to focus down the spears. And GUA should be able to clean this up. His losses will be pretty bad, but he'll be happy with this fight. Look at the military pop. It's really started to make a difference here. Now, as GUA begin to move into shamans, I'd almost be tempted to say GUA... Think about going into shamans here. Even though you haven't taken relics, even though you haven't taken sacred sites, think about going into shamans because if you do... By the way, can we just appreciate this for a second? 300 gold a minute from sacred sites. Five relics bringing in 400 gold. Actually, is that right? I think that's incorrect. 
Yeah, it, it's 800 gold. That, that is wrong. He's got 1,100. 1,100 gold a minute right now. Because he's got five relics. And he's got the Regnets. So they're pulling in 160 each. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of gold. I'm just saying it. That's a lot of gold. He, he doesn't even collect gold from his gold mine anymore. Because it's not there, Drongo. There's literally no gold mine, mate. Nice try, though. Another little raid attempt. Yeah, I, I, I feel like going into shamans here could actually be pretty decent. Because you're up against men at arms, right? And men at arms, while they're very tanky, they don't really do a lot of damage. So you can heal through that. So you got enough shamans. And I reckon you'd be in a really good spot. Knight's looking to clean up this position in the north once again. Archer's going to be here joining the fray. That Yam Network going to be able to increase that movement speed, get them really moving. Step it out, moving over towards that west side. We do see Tithe Barn's going to be coming through now for Corp. HRE in one of the toughest matchups in the game. And the Sacred Site in the center does get neutralized. GUA doing the right thing. Not letting that get... Not letting it trickle too late. One of the worst places you can be is in the late game. Five minutes to go to your Sacred Site victory on your enemy. And you're just like, mm, I don't know how I'm going to stop this. And you could have stopped it with a Khan or you could have stopped it with a Scout. Really well played by GUA at the moment. But how does he how does he possibly deal with elite units? Because now we see the elite spearmen are coming through. And elite spearmen are known for their power when it comes to the Holy Roman Empire. Some of the best units in the game here. Once these guys get all their upgrades, they become very, very strong. Numbers looking good now for GUA. He's up 20 military pop. Manganel going to be moving out. Springled also firing down, looking to help out. Manganel hits the front line. It's just going to be three lances. They're burning through this wall pretty quickly, though. And look at the archer numbers for GUA. We need to see improved siege engineering from him. We don't... We do see it? We don't see it? I don't know whether we see it. Just got to be careful. Manganel numbers are looking solid. They're, 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 this is... GUA, GUA, you need to fall back. You need... Right now, you need Springles, GUA. Don't fight this. Don't fight it, GUA. The Manganel's too strong, GUA. Don't do it like this, GUA. No, he gets completely eaten alive. He's trying to focus down the Manganel on the backside, but he's actually accidentally hitting the, the arches. Oh, he's getting destroyed. Oh, no, GUA. A single Springled would have changed to GUA. Why do you do it like this? No, GUA, don't throw it all away. GUA. A single Springled would have changed the game completely. He could have just traded it out for the mango. And then he retains his mass. No, oh, GUA, not like this. Not like this, GUA. He was so young. GUA. We gotta head back to the classroom with GUA. We gotta tell him a little bit about the Springled. You can't be fighting Manganels like that. You just can't. Calvin now coming out as well for Corp. Well, I'll tell you what, if the deal was already sealed, well, I, I should probably say if the deal wasn't already sealed, it is now. Because the Manganel should be safe from anything. This Culverin going to be able to one-shot any Springles that get in its way. 185 damage. This is the 125 health of the Springled. Even with the extra extra health from Siege Works, it's not going to matter. Third Town Center now coming through for GUA. He's starting to boom. It's feeling a little bit like a boomer. I've seen him with a couple of... White monster energy. Monster? Are they monster or mother? I think they're monster, right? Mo monster energy drinks. The white ones. GUA's always sipping on those. Saw him mowing his lawn one day. He's drinking a monster. Making, making sure the chop through doesn't happen. Nice little walls. Attack over on the east side. Just trying to draw some attention. GUA finally dropping down that sprinkled. It's only one army too late though, GUA. At this point, you're going to need like four to five Springles, at least. And you're probably going to want to throw in your own mango. We don't want 60... 62 vils... 63 vils on gold? On food? What? Why? Why do we have that many vils on food? What are we saving for? Is the winter coming? Gee, you way. Gets eaten alive over on that east side. The consequence of... Being the multitasker is sometimes you multitask too much for your own good. I 
love this music. How good is this music, by the way? Is it gonna get through? Oh my lord, they, they get through. This is why the this is why the wall has come up. Culverin gonna be helping out. I love that he blocks through this though. Brings the prelates, provides a little bit of healing, and damn, don't they heal so fast? Oh man, there's not a chance any of these vills die. They heal way too fast. Look at that. They don't even they don't even have their textiles in his healing. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. That kind of trade right there. Very well done. And once again, we enter into the cinematic mode as the archers begin to hold the line for GUA. He's kiting away from his enemy. A lot of uh, a lot of hand cannoneers on the backside. Mangonels are, are what are going to be needed to deal with this. Needs to fall back and needs Mangonels. He can't fight this head on. If he fights this, he's not going to have the best time. They're just going to trade out very effectively. But he's doing a decent job. He's holding on. Cavalry moving through. Spearman going onto the front line. Springle's getting completely traded out there. Looks like some knights also going to get mixed in. GUA holding the front line once again. Continuing to fall back into those reinforcements. Actually trades out completely well on that front side. The hand cannon is going down, getting absolutely destroyed, demolished. Whatever kind of word you'd like to use there, you can feel free to use it. Because it wasn't pretty. GUA still doing a little bit of a ring around the rosy, the run around, as he always does and has always done. Nice micro coming out from him. We take off the cinematic mode. Let's check in with GUA and see how he goes because he's going to be up against that tempo of the HRE now. Triple upgrades on the farms. 56 military pop. And now all of a sudden, there's an overwhelming number of HRE units inside the base of GUA. He's managed to keep up on village account. But tech is where he's fallen behind. And as a consequence, those elite units that we've seen plenty of, the elite spearmen, what, what other elite units do we have? Is it just literally elite spearmen? He only went for elite spears. I got mad respect. He, he's got like... Feudal age archers just chilling out here. Corp is a man who knows what he wants. And he's like, I want elite spears and that is it. I don't want anything other than elite spears. And I love that he gets the precision ring. Is that what it's called? Precision ring upgrade? He's like, yeah, this will do. He's just making only spears and horsemen. Veterancy on the horsemen. He's about to have the elite upgrade through. And now GUA on the defensive. Look at the look at the military difference. GUA tried to pull back into this game. But unfortunately, just too much damage was done. That Dark Age Holy Roman Empire comes in so strong here. Just delays the Mongol. Forces them back. Causes so much pain and heartache with this stone outcropping. And now underneath the town centers, the villagers are going to be going idle. And that's, that's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario, they're going to be dying. GUA losing bills left, right, and center. We can see at the moment he's up to 22 worker kills right now, Corp. Continuing to clean house. Cannons behind. Springled as well as the culvert. And the village account dropping down very, very quickly. Khan goes down. Surely GG gets typed any second right now. There's no way this game goes any longer. The Khan has gone down. You, you can't... Oh my lord, look at the size of those walls. That's what she said. What time do they open? Look at those. Very well positioned. I think we might be going for a sacred victory, potentially. And good game's just going to get called. GUA realizes he can't do it. Loses too many vills. Fellas, go check out these two creators. I'll leave links in the description to where you can catch them live. They might even be streaming right now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one.